Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Leverage Redemption, Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This is a very interesting episode. The whole, like, obviously, well, the Halloween theme, but also making it very, like, Scooby Doo slash Home Alone slash Paranormal Activity esque. Because even that episode title was it, uh, The Paranormal Activity Job kind of a, you know, uh, play on words when it comes to, like, well, the hacking aspect of the episode, but also, like, you know, paranormal activity, so it's just interesting, it's such a, like, it's such a unique episode, like, obviously, like, even the original show had unique episodes kind of like this, but this one just kind of stands apart, but it's just, I, I just find it so fascinating, I mean, I also love that, how, like, this case, like, landed in, well, in front of Parker when Tina, like, got hit by a car, so it's just, it's interesting when cases don't, like, come to them directly it's just like indirectly it's like oh we bump into the person and that's how we get involved into the case but um i, I really appreciate too that like um uh, that brianna is like super into halloween like she went like all out i'm like dude she's even dorkier than like hardison in some regards because like hardison's a big nerd and I don't know, I, I, I don't know, it's just, like, the fact that she goes all out like this, like, for Halloween, I think it's just so interesting, like, that she latched onto it so much, but, uh, I also love that bit between, um, well, because they talk to Tina and everything and find out her story, and, you know, Sophie's kind of hesitant to have, like, a civilian living in their place, because it's like, right, you know, when we do our criminal activities or something like that, and, uh, Parker's like, but we're not do like, Harry and Elliot are helping Hardison with something, so, like, there's we're not even doing anything criminal, like, no criminal activity. <gasps> Sophie, are you doing criminal activity? She's like, uh, what? No, no, of course not. She's like, of course, you are. You just said it. Like, I, what, I did? No, I didn't. And then, like, Parker points to the necklace she has, and then she points to the wad of cash that Parker has, and it's just a stalemate of, like, okay, how about we just agree that none of us are doing criminal activity and they shook on it. I just, I love that. Um, I also like that too when like in some of their cases where like there are normal civilians that get involved in a sense of like, right, they kind of like or get a bird's eye view of the con. I, I always think that's so interesting when that ends up, ends up happening. Well, when the client kind of ends up being a part of like the con to a certain extent. Because basically what we find out is that this dude, Lyle, and his nep uh, uh, nephew, Deke, are basically creating hauntings about, like, find houses where people were recently deceased, find them, like, you know, people who are living there now because it's usually going to be, like, a family member, and basically do a little bit of a haunting, scare the crap out of them, and get them to sell the place for real cheap so they can flip it and make a whole bunch of money off of it. So, to draw them in, the whole plan is that, because Parker tries to explain it to, um... Tina, but Tina didn't want to listen. She just kind of was like, no, there's no one behind it that this is my fault. But the way uh, Parker explains that, right, it's like the human brain's interesting because rather sometimes it kind of like, instead of accepting things as they are, you kind of, you know, you double down on what you believe and nothing that gets presented to you will change your mind otherwise. And I love that it's like, oh, like you talk about it like you don't have like a brain yourself, like you have a different perspective one. It's like, right, because Sophie uses it for her cons. If people say like she's, fake like it makes the person that she's trying to con double down and be like no she's real um i forgot what she was uh she made some reference to um yeah it has to deal with all the you know those feeling squishy stuff and then brianna's like emotions and she's like yeah that you know so because obviously this is still all kind of like Re not new new but still relatively ish new because like this side of Parker's only been around for the past 12 years and she's still obviously working on it and everything but the whole con is to lead them in with Sophie's character and everything and just I really like the accent she put on for this um and just basically make herself seem like a an easy mark but like the fact of the matter is these two are actually terrible at what they do like, really, really bad at what they do. I guess it's also, like, regular people will get conned by them, but these are, like, professional-level con. Like, you know, like, Sophie's one of the best grifters around. 
um, and Parker holds her own as like, you know, a, she's been around long enough and kind of run her own things to know, you know, cons. And it's like, right, these guys are like terrible at it. So, and even to the point, Brianna was like, no, I'm not going to let him get access to our, our, our breaker box. He just has to reluctantly be like, fine. You know, I told you I didn't want to do this, but fine, Sophie. Since, you know, if I, if we end up dying or something like that, I'm going to come, no, because Hardison's going to kill me. And when he does, I'm going to come back and haunt you, Sophie. Um... But the whole point was to get, because Parker was trying to um, have Tina look at everything and see firsthand, like, right, look at all of this. Let me show you them doing all of this so I can, you know, because the information Tina provided allowed Sophie to kind of leave herself open enough and vulnerable in just the right ways for them to take advantage of it. It is interesting, and I think it speaks volume, that it's like, right, a, a, a decent enough comment will be like yeah some things are a little too perfect this is a little too easy and be suspicious interestingly enough Deke is the one to be like yeah isn't this a little too perfect but his uncle's like shut up this is easy this is amazing so it kind of shows you that he might have a little bit more of a mind for this it just it could just be simply like he's smarter than his uncle in that regard but regardless um because the sad thing is, it's like, they didn't want Tina's house to burn, so they're kind of responsible for, like, right, they, you know, they are, like, tricking her and trying to scare her, granted, like, her being terrified led to, like, the candles and everything, to be fair, that was kind of on Deke, because apparently he set up the candles, because he's like, right, it fits, you know, the Halloween theme and everything like that, so. Because what was also interesting and why, you know, I think, um, they had asked a question of why this was so important to Parker. I think Sophie had asked why it was so important to Parker. And I can't remember her exact wording because I know later on she explains to Tina why it's like, it's more like when she's explaining it to Tina, it's a little different than what she, what she had said with Sophie. But it's like, right, they taught me, the team taught her, you know, um, she thought psychics were real. And the team showed her like that they weren't, that they were just con men themselves because, you know, uh, cause she got fooled by a, uh, psychic in the original series, R.I.P. Lou Perry. Um, cause this episode also kind of deals in the, like the afterlife element of things because we don't, we talked about it like that episode is as much as we ever really talked about. It was like the whole thing about Parker's brother, like that was about it. But I'm wondering on some level when it comes to like, uh, Tina's aunt Mildred did that, did that cross uh, Parker's mind because another thing that ended up coming up coming up was the fact is that Brianna doesn't believe in the afterlife and stuff like that. She stopped at a certain point because she stopped believing like after her parents had died and Parker obviously didn't want to push that so just kind of let it go because I guess Parker's like to some extent like her perspective's a little dip like it it took like losing someone that's very important to you to like make Brianna believe what she believes and also Parker believe what she believes and or at least believed in that regard you know but I think that's really I want to focus on that interestingly enough like we've never heard Hardison talk about his family situation like other than like oh yeah like n n like his Nana being his foster mom and everything like that's about it like there was never any conversations about like whether he sought out his biological parents or anything like that so it's interesting you know that uh I mean, that conversation in itself is maybe that's why, like, Parker and Brianna, or at least why Brianna kind of latched on to Parker as much, because it's like, right, Parker had a very similar up, not the same, obviously, very different, but a similar upbringing to her and Hardison, where it's like, right, I mean, they were lucky enough to kind of stick with one foster family, like, Parker wasn't, you know? I mean, obviously, the thing, closest thing she had to, like, a full-blown dad was Archie, so. But regardless, I, I went on a bit of a tangent, I just thought that was, um interesting but um as they uh end up playing out the con and everything and sophie's you know putting on her performance and i'd love that it's like right when like sophie is so obviously super overacting like oh big daddy is that you oh woe is me type of stuff i'm like i love it like i love when like her characters are like super like like obviously over like hamming up the scene type of thing and I love it and once again just kind of like the Home Alone-esque aspect of like them trying to break in and then like Brianna like using the sound effects and stuff like that and like the traps like oh you're trying to pull that painting off the wall and then she like unlatched it which I love that almost everything in that house is literally connected to devices so it's like I, I, I love that um 
And, you know, obviously Tina really hates these guys finding out, like, what they do. But it's like, right, look at the shenanigans of watching this all fall apart. And it's like, right, it's like, let's go watch the best part, the gloating. But I thought what's really interesting is when we find out, like, you know, it, earlier in the episode, they hint to, like, wait, there's more to this. And we find out it isn't just a bumbling group of con men. Actually, there's a well-known hitman known as the Wraith. Uh, who's a part of all this. Basically, he's trying to kill... Um, what, what was there? It's this person that Brianna had mentioned earlier in the episode, like, really liking her. She's like, yeah, I can't wait for her to turn 35 so she can run for president. She's, what, the district attorney of uh, New Jersey. I think the woman's name was, like, Christina. Um, he, uh, the rape shows up to kill her because in New Jersey, like, she cracks down heavy on the uh, New Jersey mob, and so they're like they put out a hit on her. So, and so it's like right, this guy is bad news. Um, obviously, Sophie's tied to a chair, and it's like right, we got to kill her. But even Lyle and Deke are kind of like, yeah, do we really need to do that? We can let her go. He's like, oh, if you decide to do that, the person that's seen my face, she no longer becomes a liability, but you two do. So, but what I thought was interesting too is when they find out, like when they reveal, like yeah, like uh, their con and everything like that about doing the hauntings and stuff like that, and you have um, the wraith being like, "Wait, you what?" He's like, "You shouldn't mess with that." And then it's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a minute, what?" Because even Dick is like, "But you kill people." Even though I'm like, "That doesn't make any sense." The irony: a hitman that's scared of the supernatural. He's scared of like, "Yeah, don't mess with the juju of like." Because he's like, "Have you ever seen the, like the light disappear from people's eyes?" He's like, "I have seen it." He's like, "You don't want to mess with that stuff." But it's like, no, you kill people. Like, how can you be like afraid of being haunted and stuff like that? But I guess because you are a killer, like makes it makes you lean into that a little bit more. But he tries to justify by being like, no, I don't directly kill anyone. I'm just an instrument, so it's not on me. Like, if anyone's going to get haunted, it's the person that hired me. It's going to be them that gets haunted, not me, because I'm just a, I'm just a blunt instrument that gets used. And so they decide to use that to their advantage, try to spook him. And I uh, also I love uh, Parker's takedown of Hamilton. It's like, that was pretty sick. The bat flips, bat flips, push him against the wall, and good old taser, zap. And even Tina been like, wow, that's actually pretty dope, getting Tina out. Which she was like, you know what? You can actually go out the window, Parker. I'm going to stay here and just die because I'm, I'm not going out that window. Uh, but the uh, – uh, I just – and getting Deke to sign up with them I thought was pretty impressive. Like the moment the way that played out was like, okay, they were able to convince him. Because he only – he didn't know that they were like scamming people. Like he thought like he was doing something a little more legitimate. And now he apologized. He's like, right, I'm just trying to scare people out of their houses. That's what my, we were supposed to be doing. But like even that's not what he wanted. Like he – because he's taking over for his father after his father died. Because uh, it was like his father and his uncle working together. But he kind of uh, took over filling in his dad's shoes. Which I don't know if that's implying like his dad was helping run these cons with his brother. Or like what was what was happening in that regard. Or whether like the uncle did this like after his brother died. But he, uh, Deke had to like leave like uh, design school to kind of help out with the business and stuff like that. So... But also, it's like, I guess it costs a lot of money for that. So it's like, they're saving money by him just doing this. And like, obviously, his uncle's kind of like, nah, don't waste time at that school. Like, you have a legitimate job doing this. So Sophie convinced him, like, right, you you can do the right thing now. So, and I think that's also an interesting aspect of like a lot of these cons, too, is like, when it's not just about taking down the bad guy, it's also about like, you know, I mean, it fits the narrative of this, uh, of this reboot of like, Redemption, and it's like right, you have a chance to turn your life around. They did it a few times for some of the people. Like they initially went into like, oh, I'm here to destroy this person, but it's like, no, like, you know, I mean, in some take cases, it's like right, we came in to destroy this person, and things came out a better, like like a Hurley. That that is a prime example of kind of like a a Lyle thing. Um, I mean, a Deke thing, not Lyle, but um, yeah, like Sophie playing dead and everything. Um, them haunting, um, using projectors and stuff like that, and smoke and sound effects to scare the living crap out of the wraith. Like, once again, it's just crazy to think a hitman is scared of ghosts, you know? Uh, but I'm mean, gonna guess everyone's gotta have their weakness, and they pretend like, oh my god, uh, Deke got pulled into a door and he got killed or whatever. And Lyle and the wraith are so scared, they end up confessing everything, and even Lyle being like, wait, Tina? And it's like, yep. Uh, so... 
they've been busted. They let Deke go. It's like, go back to, like, you know, designer school and just, you have this opportunity. You give him this second chance, so take it. And he's like, I will, you know, so. I'm glad also, like, I'm sure, I'm, I'm super, they didn't cover it in the episode, but I'm curious what that conversation would have been like for Tina, how she would have felt about it. Because I guess it's like the people behind everything got busted, so. But also, like, the wonders of, oh, what you thought would end up being a simple job for the team ended up turning out to be a lot scarier and more complicated when, you know, a renowned hitman ends up getting involved, so. But uh, luckily, they ended up resolving everything. Obviously, uh, Tina plans on rebuilding her Aunt Mildred's house because that's what she would want. Because uh, I didn't talk about it earlier because I think it is a, it's sad because... Uh, Tina blamed herself, like, right, like, the reason why she wanted to believe in all of that so much that aunt, her Aunt Mildred was actually behind it is because she felt guilty. It's like, I just needed a break from everything, so I just wanted a walk and a coffee, and by the time she came back, her Aunt Mildred had, like, was on the floor and died in front of her bedroom, in front of um, Tina's bedroom door, so she blamed herself, like, I wasn't there, and my aunt, my aunt died along, so that's why she didn't want to leave, because it's like, right, like, it's almost like she felt indebted, like, you know, she cared for her aunt, but it's like she just needed a break and she just, she felt guilty about it, which Parker's like, no, like, you literally just went for a walk in a, like, coffee. Like, that, you can't blame yourself for what happened. You shouldn't feel guilty about, you know, everything. So, I think that's also a theme in this. I'm, I'm sure we might see more of, you know, obviously, especially with the Harry storylines of, like, right, your guilt, like, what your guilt will end up pushing you to do and act like, obviously, we saw in the last episode. But it's just... Uh, interesting development. Once again, just being able to literally take down a hitman with a haunted house style shenanigans. Um, you know, it was a two folder. Once again, taking Lyle off the board as a con man, and also Deke as well, but you know, also taking down a hitman and his associates. So, all well that ends well, you know, and even Elliot being proud of uh, Brianna for like, oh, wow. You took down like a hitman, like with just a haunted house. It's like, yep. So it's like, yeah. And even love the creepy thing at the end of them trying to scare Elliot and Harry. And I even love at the end where like Dean Devlin is written in kind of like orange, like out of like a horror movie. So I was like, oh man, I just, I love the aesthetic of this episode. I'm trying to think. I don't think there were, there were Christmas themed episodes. I don't know. If, I don't believe there were any Halloween themed episodes in the original show. So I don't think that's something. I think that's something kind of new that they've done for this. You know. So I thought that was. Uh, pretty dope, because I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, because, like, something that also popped in my mind is, like, oh, yeah, like, oh, there's some candy there, and then Parker's like, no, that's my candy. It's like, right, Parker's a nut for candy, in particular chocolate, because, you know, it's like, she, last thing we want is her to be surrounded by a whole bunch of chocolate. We saw what that was like. I wonder, has that gotten tempered any over the years? The fact that she had that large thing of candy, I'm assuming we're all chocolate, but maybe she's just kind of a, like, she just has a large sweet tooth, so maybe it's just like candies in general, or maybe those were specifically chocolate. So, kind of mind answer my question of, nah, she, that hasn't been tempered at all. So, a really fun and interesting episode. Um, I'm really curious to ultimately see where everything is up taking us going forward into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Till next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.